This is the TRL Footy Show brought to you by Gatton Leagues Club, Dolby Leagues Club, Toowoomba Valley's Football Club and Power FM. Live and free from the Toowoomba Sports Club here on Power TV Australia. And now, here's your host from the Obi and Cookie Call on Power FM, Andrew O'Brien, a.k.a. Obi. Well, thanks very much, Robbo, and welcome to the Toowoomba Rugby League Footy Show. And we are here at our... Our sponsors venue here at Toowoomba Sports Club. We were supposed to go out to uh, Waddles, but we'll, we'll keep you up to date more about there's a reason why we're here. But joining me on the panel this week is uh, none other than a name synonymous with rugby league, a big member of the Obi and Cookie Corps, none other than Neb Cherry. How are you, Neville? Mate, Obi, I'm still pumped from the game on the weekend. Sensational. I've been on a high all week and I just can't wait for the semis to come back this week. And joining us are two combatants uh, from last week's uh, week two of the Toowoomba Rugby League Criterion Hotel Dolby finals is, uh, and they're involved this week for the preliminary final. And none other has been here before, Mitch Coiner from Waddles. G'day, Mitchie. G'day, mate. How you doing? Yeah, it's good. good. And we had a lot of big chat and also first timer. And every one of his mates were, ta- were texting me today. And they said he's got a head for TV, none other than Sean <laughs> Hamill. How are you, Shawnee? Good, mate. Good. That's Going well. Good. I reckon, uh, Nev, these two fellas have been uh, uh, two of the form players in our competition all year, won't you reckon? Mate, all year, but with the business end of Ovi, especially in those semis, I watched them both last week. They both had great games and they're very instrumental to their side to progress through to the grand final this week. That's right. Let's talk about the Mustangs. It's their last week, this uh, last game this week, and they're going to play the Capras last week. They got touched up by Wynn and Manly, who are f- just outside the uh, top six I have. I think they have in the Colts competition there, 56 points to six. And we wish them all the best for their last round next week, and we look forward to seeing them uh, next uh, next. Uh, uh, next year, uh, Nev, hey, you know, so uh, yep. Mustangs and, uh, uh, look, uh, we've talked about every week, Nev, what's your take on the Mustangs? Mate, oh, I think it's a great concept. They had a brilliant interview with Blakey Cullen from Pittsworth during the week on the news and, mate, the thing that comes across to me is just their attitude. That They've done a great job all year, they're still turning up for each other, they're still keen as mustard and, mate, those fellas that don't go on, when they come back to our competition, geez, we end up with some good players, hit, Obi. Hit the nail right on the head and took the words right out of my mouth. And I will say to you, Sean, out of all the clubs I would suggest that uh, Highfields has been the most affected by them supplying players to the Mustangs. Oh yeah, we've got a young crop out there and um, that shows coming through the grades. Yeah, we've got a strong side, like juniors out there and they step up so it's really good. And uh, have you ever been mooted uh, for Mustangs or did you play for them? Oh, I played uh, Clydesdales back then, under 20s. Okay. Uh, yeah, and under 18, so yeah, I was at Bally's then. And Mitch, you um, um, been the higher level as well, your take on the Mustangs? Um, it's a fantastic concept. Um, myself and Sean were lucky enough to be in the inaugural year of the Clydesdales back in 2012. Um, so when when that competition came out, there was you know blokes pretty well wanting to get in that side and knew the prestige of it. So it, it's it's a brilliant pathway for those boys um, and an excellent development. So. As you said before, it's, it's a bit disheartening the way they're going, but the fact that they're all turning up to training and still competing each week is, is a real credit to, to those boys and, and obviously Eugene as well. Ned, the last three seasons we've been around the under-18s and I have not seen one uh, coach or any player complain about uh, Mustangs and they actually look forward to it and I think we've got bigger and better things in, uh, uh, ahead for the Mustangs. Most definitely, Obi, and as you said, like that comes down to the attitude, the players at the clubs as well, and you did set right, like they see it as prestige, as a stepping stone, but more importantly, we get to keep those young fellas here on the downs, you know, previously they'd go off, you'd never see them again, half the time they weren't even playing footy by the time they reached 21, so. Yeah, look, I, I've got a bit of a say, and I'm probably left field here, and uh, I haven't spoken to many people about it. Uh, I went out to the Trust Cup games out at uh, Gundawindi, and one thing I thought, if we're going to have an Trust Cup game, I mean, we've got some great venues around our area, and I think the Mustangs probably should be involved uh, with definitely. our scheduling of the, of the Toowoomba Rugby League. It'd be great if they've got uh, uh, X amount of uh, games, and like 12 home games. Well, we've got 11 clubs. Uh, it'd be great to have them. If you had uh, mates in um, uh, Mustangs and they were playing in your undercard, uh, wouldn't it be great for you guys? Yeah, it'd be fantastic. I know, uh, in particular, a lot of boys that are playing here in the under-18s competition, they, they finish school and and go off um, to Brisbane competitions and play for Norse and Redcliffe and, and whoever it might be. So to have them back in the region and, and playing would be a really good showcase and, and getting people here to um, come and visit the Garden City. Yeah, but even that, on the other side of the coin, 
we could have some games up at Gold Park next year. Most definitely. I mean, yeah. if it's a monetary thing, that can be worked out. That's, yeah, that's, most that's definitely. The least I think of it, worries. it would be absolutely awesome for them to come and play like a, a, a curse, a precursor to an A-grade game, and, and you see the crowds. Yeah. yeah, mate, I reckon it would be awesome. Okay. Something we should look at. Well, as we go to the break, let's look at an interview with one of our young stars, and he's played very well. Only 16 playing under 18s for Dolby. It's Josh Chappell. This is the Toowoomba Rugby League footy show. After the break, Obi and the panel will review week two of the TRL Criterion Hotel final series. This is the TRL footy show brought to you by the Gatton Leagues Club, Dolby Leagues Club, Toowoomba Valley's Football Club and Power FM. We're live and free from the Toowoomba Sports Club on Power TV. Uh, Neff Cherry reporting the Toowoomba Rugby League and I'm here with the 5'8 for the Dolby Diehards, under 18 side, Joshua Chappell, former Tara Panthers. They love the rugby league out that way. Mate, he's nearly had him. He's only five minutes away from making the grand final. Mm, we had him there oh, first 30 minutes. I thought we had the game. We just let him score that late try. That gave him momentum going into the second half, and we just, we just couldn't hang on. Mate, it's all about game management. And who do you think stood up for you, especially in that first half when you were all over the top of high field? Uh, probably our captain, our number 12, Marty. Um, he just got composure there in the middle, and then yeah, we, our, our, um, Harvest, me and Trav, we just play off the back of it, so it's easy. Mate, I stuck my head in your dressing shed there, and it's fairly forlorn they just they're not real happy what are you going to go and work on especially he's turned up here with high expectations oh we just got to get the training just put in work and then uh come out and try and beat south next week so that's all we can do mate you're still only 16 joshua so you're still in the under 18s for a few years yet you found much of a step up between 16s and 18s oh uh, yeah uh, I, I like playing 18s better i reckon it's uh, a bit more competitive and um get around the boys a lot so that's good who played well for you today josh uh, I'll probably have to say our front rowers, Noah and Connor, and, and also Marty, so yeah. Well done, you played very well yourself. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thanks for joining us for the TRL Footy Show from the Toowoomba Sports Club. Let's get back to Obi and the panel. Well, welcome back to the Toowoomba Rugby League for Footy Show. Sorry for my Clark Kent look tonight. I've usually got a, uh, a cap on and look, I'm pretty smooth looking anyway, uh, uh, Neb. But that Josh uh, uh, Chappell, what a future he has got, mate. Mate, a real good young fellow. He comes from a great family out of Tara there, the Chapels. And his old man, super proud of him. And mate, he, he's a good player for 16. He controls that Dolby under 18s team. What I liked about young Josh is his kicking game. You know, I mean, we've saw a lot of games uh, over the last two weeks, mate. And with that win, of all the players, including A grade, he probably had the best kicking game, didn't he? Most definitely. Mate. Yeah. And he just stood out above everyone. Yeah, it's good. So let's go and have a look at the summary of week two of the Toowoomba Rugby League Criterion Hotel Final Series. And the first game we're going to analyse is the Highfields game, 42 to nil over defending Premier's uh, uh, Dolby. And Sean, you were involved with that game. And I will say, and I've written that, it was 20 nil at half time, right? But you guys scored uh, a couple of close tries right to half time. It was pretty brutal that first half. And then you scored the second, the first uh, couple of minutes in the second half, all right? And it was too far for them to come back. But hey, let's not take anything away from you. Uh, no, no, our boys really defended well that first 20 minutes. We knew we just had to weather that storm and if we could pick up a few tries, we'd really go a long way to finishing them boys off. And, um, you know, to v defend our line then score a couple of long ranges, we just thought, you know, we need to go on with this now after half time and not just defend the lead. And how about that Campbell Stewart, uh, Neb, you know, like he played, as I said, he just said he just uh, played very well against these guys, uh, I think it was the first round. And uh, he was just fantastic on the weekend. Mate, he certainly was. And for a guy, he didn't drop his bundle. It looked like he might even get back into the first grade side if Blakey Ape wasn't out. But he took that cross field kick and you could see the look on his face. He caught it and it looked like he was going to get bundled out. He did a quick <coughs> shake and shake and down the sideline. And, mate, he's a very classy man. You know, terrible running style on the guy, but he can move. <laughs> he's very lanky, yeah. He, um, he's very good, Cam. He's come from that high level as well, being yep. up the sunny coast. and. You know, he really adds a lot of experience on that right edge for us. Yep. And, yeah, we give it to him a couple of times at training <laughs> when he, you know, jumping unnecessarily. But <laughs> he, does, he does take some wonderful catches for yeah. us, yeah, for yep. sure. Yeah, look, uh, I, I, I has it to say, and, like, you know, and uh, the, the wonderful contest in that first round, it, look, I reckon it was one of the games of the season. Yep. 
between him and Braden Wilson, right? Um, their uh, skill level in the air is, is great. It's part of the game now, isn't it, Mitch? Yeah, they're both really class acts. Um, it, it's gone, gone of the days where uh, the wing position was just filled in. It's obviously yeah. not only attacking-wise, uh, you need to be very skillful to to get those cross-field kicks and score in the corner with the dives they do these days, but also defensively, uh, particularly when you get to NRL level, most tries are scored when that winger misreads the shut yeah. or, or comes in off, the, off their sideline. So it's obviously a very important role, and we've got um, some great players in TRL that can do it very effectively. Yeah, look, uh, Sean, as you know, yeah. I've been uh, talking to you guys about your mental approach, and uh, since your Waddle's uh, <coughs> loss, which I think really woke you up, uh, you've been very, very good and uh, a lot more mature t team. And it and it shows that you guys are talking about it, Sean. Yeah, oh, 100%. Um, we made it a real emphasis point the last couple of weeks after that Waddles game to just really pull back on our discipline, really sharpen that up and um, just have the right attitude and energy going into the game. And it worked against Dolby, and especially especially that second half, you know, you, you left no stone unturned, did you? No, oh, that's right, mate. You know, we... We knew if we come out there and just weather that storm in the second half again, we could just go on with it. And, you know, we really just tried to stay away from giving away penalties and just play really smart football. And game management from Sean Loxley and Jared Lee, it's just really what our team is based on at the minute. Look, it hurts with that 42 nil uh, scoreline, especially if you're a Dolby's player. And I go back to the grand final and man, they've felt the same way as Pittsburgh. Yeah. How, however, right, Dolby still left a heap out there. It, and what I'm getting at, I felt it was Highfield's best performance uh, probably in the last two or three years. Mate, most definitely. You know, I take that back to Obi. After they got kicked out of the semis last year, they were hurting. You could talk to the players after it, they hurt. So they didn't forget that and they've turned up there to play. And to Dolby's credit, look, they've thrown everything at the competition they possibly could. And as we talk, spoke to Derek Brady after the game, it's hard to go back to back. You've got to have a really special team to do that. Yeah, and, and I think, uh, as we all know, you know, like if you're showing a little bit of uh, bark off your armour, meaning injury, right, uh, there's nowhere to hide in these, uh, comp in these finals, is there, boys? No, certainly not. Um, I was just talking before with never about the quality of the competition at the moment. Um, you're repetitively playing competitive games week by week. They're very physically uh, and mentally taxing. So you, you have to really um, look after your body and be ready to go each week because there's not too many easy games throughout the season. How did everyone pull up? After the weekend's game, they, do you think they mentally drained? Uh, not so much mentally drained. We were just obviously very disappointed in the result. It's yeah. Yeah, it's a stepping stone where we could have had ourselves obviously in the grand final. So I think more just mentally disappointed. But we got together at training on, on Tuesday and, and talked about that's in the past. Now we need to focus on this week. Um, and, and we've really just tried to be positive and go yeah. go forward from there. Yeah, well, uh, let's get on to this uh, wonderful game. Uh, this Valleys versus Waddles uh, uh, here it was just uh, very, very impressive. And uh, the score ended up 18 points to 16. And uh, we've got a few uh, videos to see of this, uh, of this here as well, uh, especially your mate, Brandon Wilson. Here it is. Uh, forget the score. It was 8-6 at... Uh, and here it is, the, the score yeah. here, and he scores in, in the corner there. 8-6, there's a bit of a problem with the actual uh, uh, the, t the clock. However, uh, specifically with the clock, uh, it was only a couple of seconds ago, the referee had uh, called stop off, and uh, certainly uh, you took advantage. And one thing I've always liked about Brandon Wilson, right, he can run on that <laughs> amount of uh, uh, ground, can't he? Yeah, he definitely knows how to flirt with the try line, old, old Braden. But um, that, that was at that stage of the game. We, we really needed to um, to score those points. So to have it in that last uh, opportunity of the half was fantastic. It certainly was. And uh, in the dressing sheds after what was said at half time. In half time in the dressing shed, we just talked about... Obviously, we come in uh, with, with a high after scoring that try. Um, and we just talked about playing completion footy and we really needed to build on how we finished in that second half. That's right. Yep. Mate, it was just it was the game of the year, to be honest. And as we touched on there before, it just it was so emotional. Like we were up there commentating, we were flat out talking that we were involved in the game and just the people, the crowd, it just could have went either way and just like I said, I'm still on a high Thursday. Yeah, well, look, uh, it was a game where uh, Valleys got in front by 18 points to 10, and what was it, it was uh, 10, 10, 8, and then uh, Valleys got to 12, 10. And then, look, the turning point, I think, Neville, was certainly when Zach Miles, uh, uh, he 
uh, return to sender uh, kick from Matthew Duggan on his own line. He beat seven or eight of you boys, and then the ensuing three or four tackles, Corey McGrady went over. That's that's finals footy for you. That yeah. was a massive momentum change. Um, our kick chase wasn't good enough, and that obviously yeah got them back and within the ball. Did you see that up. stage of the game on the sideline watching it? Look like you were, were coming for him. You were nearly going to get him. You were nearly going to get him, and that one move from yeah. young Zachy Miles, who plays exactly like his father used to play, it's. It's sort of nullified you and swung the momentum. And as we touched on in the call, I'd be like, Richard Murray, three weeks ago, who the heck was Richard Murray? And just those two young fellas, like, they're a bunch of kids that turned up and won a game to go straight to the grand final. Well, if we can have a look at that uh, Corey McGrady try. Play the ball, it comes to McGrady. He, has, he takes it on. He still has to say two or three with him over and right under the end of uh, under the post there. Put your 18, 10 in front, and they were pretty busted on the on the bench then, everyone. Oh mate, they, they had no one left. Uh, Callum Hart off. Yep. Yeah. Um, Dylan Chan. The Dylan Chan, of course. Chan, yep. He was gone, and then, like they were just <coughs> busted. They were busted all across the park, and th that's just the level of the game, the ferocity of it. Do you find Corey McGrady strong, physically strong? Because I think look, the last 20 minutes of any game, that's when he's most effective. If you're a little bit lazy in that 18. He'll go through you on. He's, he's a very physical ball runner. He, uh, I know he ran straight through me there. Um, but, but like you said, it was the back end of that game when we were fatigued and Valleys were controlling the ball. Uh, and he's got the confidence to, to take the line on and sort of single people out one on one. So he's um, definitely a massive strike weapon for yeah. Valleys. Yeah, and, and Mitch, was it a game uh, yeah. compared to others? It really it looked like it was just going 100 miles an hour from one end to another. Yeah, I, I uh, think. Did you find it was up another level? Yeah. What, what Nev said before, it, just, it was so driven by emotion. It just seemed that the game actually felt like it went so quick because it was just back and forth and there, back and forth and there was, um, there was so much at stake that both teams were really just laying everything on the there line. There wasn't a bad player on the field. No, I think engage a game like it, that. it was one of those games where, unfortunately, you do have to have a loser, but both sides were, yeah. were fantastic and to, to Valley's credit, um, they deserved the win at the end of the day. Yeah, we've got some footage of the, just the last passage of play and you can see the excitement and the last ditch uh, uh, tackling. Uh, he is uh, deep in, uh, uh, in Waddle's half and I think there's only about a minute to go here. It's 18-16, sorry about this uh, uh, footage here, but you can see right down the side there, Brendan Wilson, they come across there and the desperation uh, from the Valley's defence, which was the winner on the night as far as I was concerned. They really had fantastic market defence. And they throw the ball here, uh, uh, Waddles, and don't die wondering, that's for sure, you see. And, uh, uh, and look at the crowd there, absolutely fantastic uh, night it was as we, as we see, see that as well. So as you're watching that footage, we'll go on to reserve grade. And reserve grade, very close competition, Pittsworth 32 uh, over your Reggie's 24. Look, what a great uh, year for your Reggie's, uh, uh, Mitch, uh, in Waddles, because I think they were coming bottom of the table uh, last year and they've gone uh, into the second week of the finals. Yeah, the Reggies boys had a fantastic season. Um, what Cranky and Garth did out there with those boys was, was absolutely fantastic. They were really um, a tight group, and t to make it that far into the finals is a real credit to themselves. And I think, the, um, I think that reserve grade competition is quite strong. Oh. I know, particularly for high fields and also um, Waddles, there's a lot of those boys that are on the fringe of playing A grade, yep. um, and, and they're unlucky because of whether it might be an injury or whatnot. But um, yeah, it's going to be a fantastic reserve grade grand final as well. Yeah, well, Gatton made it on, on the expense of you fellas out there. One thing I've liked about you guys is that you've got depth and you're fit this year, which has been a holy grail for Gus for the last two or three years. And I mean, you of all people, mate, you've had uh, every injury in the book. If we put your chart up here, I think, Shawnee, <laughs> all right, we can put a circle around all of you, couldn't we? Oh, yeah, nearly, mate. <laughs> yeah, no, Gus, he loves his fitness and he really hooks the boys in, you know, all through pre season and then, you know, deep into that first round as well. And, um, you know, it's expected that the Reggies are doing the same, the same as the first graders. And, you know, there's, like Mitch said, there's a lot of boys in that reserve grade side that could be playing A grade, it's just, yeah, this is the other boys in front My of My spies told me again that their uh, discipline was a bit uh, uh, needed to improve, especially if they're going to uh, uh, beat Pittsburgh to make that uh, grand final uh, uh, on the weekend. Yeah, mate, discipline really let them down. I think they went into that game a bit complacent as well. Um, but, you know, that probably the wake-up call they needed, really. So they, were, they ripped in at training on Tuesday and they'll rip in again tonight and we'll see how we go. And on to the under-18s, uh, Nev, uh, this wonderful Southside continue uh, their march 
uh, towards the finals coming from fifth after they were certainly convincing Mats and Rasmussen uh, uh, winners that, uh, uh, yes, they convincingly, uh, well, not convincingly, but uh, they toughed it out against uh, determined Gatton. And congratulations to Gatton and under 18. They've made the finals for 10 years or so, and it's great to see them up there. Oh, most definitely. And just like Gatton didn't die wondering. No, they tried really hard. And for the first 20 minutes, they mixed it with the South Tigers. And uh, look, put a little bit of a fright into them, but just the class of South, when they knuckle down, they just kick on and blow any side off the park. And then the other under 18 game there, like that was just neck and neck. And it just could have went either way until Zach Croft got a try there just before half time, just to separate them a little bit. Yeah, I believe South were a bit busted with their, uh, their, their guns there. So uh, Paul Reedy's going to join us after the break. And Maybe he's got some more news on that, but they play uh, Dolby, and this was a wonderful game, awesome. Highfields and Dolby. Uh, Dolby led 20 points to six, and uh, your boys come back, and uh, it really lifted you guys, and they end up winning uh, 32 points to 26. It was 26 all, and you guys uh, scored with a, a couple of minutes to go in under 18s. Yeah, mate, Jared and um, Richie, they've done a great job with those young fellas, and you know they're very committed, those young fellas as well. They're always at training, they've always got big numbers, and... Mate, they're just a great side. Zach Croft, what a player, mate. I think he's a superstar one. I think, mate, yeah, well, yeah, I, think I, I called it. Gee, I was good. I think uh, Nutsy and Cookie <laughs> and Kelvin have got yeah. uh, the work cut out for me to do ball by ball. Is that right, Nat? Yeah, something like that. Though. I think there's people behind you giving your hand, calling yeah. out the names. Yeah, that's you, right. I had no idea. And even <laughs> Reeds was on the microphone beforehand. And all he could say is, gee, that George McFay is a really good commentator. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, but what I will say is that that was a pearl of a game and I can't yep. believe what I get so excited about Shawnee is that Highfields has actually got a side in the grand final. Yeah mate, it's credit to Gus and you know all the coaching staff and around the club, you know, win the club championship firstly and then you know hopefully we'll have all three grades in the grand final. So. Yeah that's right. That's, you watch Gus out there at home games or any game, he just doesn't watch the A grade, you see him there, he watches every single grade, every single player, yep. like, nobody does it He's like very him. involved with all three grades, yeah. like he's, yep. he's a tremendous bloke. Yeah, you know what? Cause it, and, and, um, he, he cries to me because he can't get a start in either of them, I can tell you. <laughs> Second division, uh, Pittsworth 28 defeated uh, uh, Stanthorpe uh, 24 in an absolute cliffhanger, uh, Nev. And I tell you what, I think they got some passion. I saw your interview uh, on Facebook through the week, mate, and uh, what a great season for Stanthorpe. Mate, Grand brilliant. Pittsburgh. And all this game come down to over you. One drop ball on halfway, 30 seconds out, Pittsworth went on to score. It was that close. and. Yeah, the Stanthorpe, it's just brilliant having them in your competition. You see the comments on the Facebook, etc. Like they, they really love their rugby league down there. They sure do, and they go on to play Gatton, who are minor premiers in second division, and they uh, lost to Warwick 28 points to 22 in a very close game. And, of course, Warwick only beat Pittsburgh the previous week uh, on the bell there as well. And Gatton, well, they went out 1-2. They were minor premiers last year and didn't make the grand final in second division. Dolby beat Pittsworth in last year's grand final. So Pittsworth will be wanting to make amends for that second division for grand final. Uh, but uh, yeah, Warwick, a um, bit late starters. They had a but slow start good. in second division. They're looking pretty uh, pretty good at the moment. Uh, have you had much to do with your, uh, uh, keeping an eye on these second division uh, guys, mate? Because uh, you guys haven't got second division, have you? No, so I haven't really um, got to to look at the division too much, but by the looks of those score lines, it looks like it's very competitive. Yeah, um, yep. but both of those games, there's only really a try in it, so particularly for regions like um, Warwick <coughs> and Stanthorpe, it's great to see that they've still yeah. got teams in their club alive in the final series. Yep. Okay, well as we go to the break, uh, we're going to review the big game. Uh, Reed's come and joins us then. Uh, to go to the break. Let's look at the interview with the Hutchies player of the match with Corey McGrady. It was great from you, Nev, because uh, you see the actual live uh, after game talk from the OBN Cookie Call uh, on the weekend. This is the TRL Footy Show. After the break, we'll preview week three of the TRL Criterion Hotel Final Series. This is the TRL Footy Show brought to you by Gatton Leagues Club, Dolby Leagues Club, Toowoomba Valley's Football Club and Power FM. We are live and free from the Toowoomba Sports Club today on Power TV Australia. Yeah, Obi, o- I've got the man of the match, Corey McGrady, the Hutchies winner of today. Corey, mate, that was tough, really tough. Yeah, it was, mate. Um, you know, we knew, we knew since the start when we, when we played, played balls, especially. Every time we played them, it was a tough game. But, um, yeah, it's really good to get the win today. Head towards the grand final in a couple of weeks time. Mate, talk, talk me through that try. Like, you were caught five metres out. You should never have made it. What was going through your mind? You just plenty of leg drivers, just like you willed yourself to score. Oh, yeah, you know, well, yeah, that's it. 
Lashley will, yeah, but um, you know, all these boys here, all my forwards and all my teammates got me down there, so yeah, and also, yeah, did the work with them. Mate, that'd be really hard. Pick me a man of the match apart from you out of that, because everyone across from the field, like little Richie Murray. Oh, yeah, all the boys, we, like we said at the start, you know, we all we all had to dig deep for each other, and um, yeah, and I really think that we did. We had to play it down, and to get away to win like that against a tough team like that, we all dug deep together. Mate, it's certainly been a special season, like the, the level's just gone up through the roof, and uh, to come out and make a grand final this year is really, really special, especially with the Valley's Roosters heading into their 100th year. Yeah, no, yeah, it's really good. This, this club is a, is a great club, you know, um, we all gel together as one, and um, hopefully in two weeks' time we can um, take, take the big one home there. Mate, well, behalf on Hutchison Builders, they've been wonderful sponsors for us out throughout the year. Mate, just before I give it, are these all your little family around here? All the yeah, little, all my niece, all my niece. Mate, all the little stars, <laughs> brilliant. They love it here, but... Yeah. Mate, we'll get the photo right over. Back to you, Avery. Thanks, no, Corey. Thanks, mate. Cheers. and coffee. Whether you're a professional musician, a weekend warrior, or just starting out, you need to talk to the experts at Royce Music. With over 35 years' experience, Royce Toowoomba's oldest music store, specializing in guitars, drums, and sound equipment, and can even repair and maintain your equipment. Call them today on 46-327-377, drop into their showroom at 17 Bowen Street, or find them on Facebook. Royce Music, selling Toowoomba's finest musical instruments. Hi, I'm Neil from CGD Group and we do printing with imagination. Our products and imaging have that wow factor. Whether it be business cards, flyers, the Coffee Gazette or our brand new A5 video folders and animation. Have your business branding remembered. Call us today on 4639 5553. CGD Group, printing with imagination. On Power TV Australia, we take a frank look at computers, the internet and social media with a team of experts from around the world with Switched On IT. Learn what makes the internet tick and how to keep your kids safe online. Discover a whole new world of entertainment at www.powertvaustralia.com or download the app from the Google Play Store. Welcome back to the TRL Footy Show from the Toowoomba Sports Club. Here's Obi and the panel. Yeah, well, welcome back to the Tour Rugby League uh, Footy Show, and joining me uh, is uh, our co-host. Uh, he looks after me through the year. Uh, Mustang's uh, uh, chairman, none other than the best man for the job, Paul Reedy. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Avi. Welcome along, boys. Thanks for inviting me back on the show. Now, now, Reed, I wanted to ask you before we go into the actual preview of this game as well. The the games last week. What was your take on them? Yeah, look, I thought it was really good football. Um, uh, we were, I was calling the, the PA, so I was only watching the main oval, but all games, the second division was quite entertaining. It was a good match. The under-18s was fantastic. You felt like Dolby were about to win and then Do that Highfields were going to win and they kept sort of ebbing and flowing. And then uh, the Reggies was a good... Uh, the, sorry, the first A-grade game. Uh, Highfields um, surprised me. Um, I thought they could win, and I thought it would be a close game, but they came out and really found Dolby wanting in every area of the match and they were very slick, but I did say to Gus 
after the match. Um, it was good to see that I think it's one of the first times this year that Highfields has probably had their best 17 yep. available to them yep. um, consistently. So it was good to see them there. And then in the A grade, it was everything I thought it would be. Uh, a rematch again, I suppose, of that fantastic match in Rasmussen uh, final. And look, uh, Reid's uh, saying that we got caught up in the emotion because I suppose what was permanent to us is that uh, Waddle's just come and come and come and you really kept how was how was Valleys doing that when they had Callum Hart down, uh, they had Chan, Chan gone, they had another player uh, gone as well. They had, they had two bikes go to the uh, fin. So they had uh, the it match. was actually 17 minutes of, right, no, of, of, 12 of, of, of 12 men, and I actually feel it was their best ever win uh, in many years since the uh, the great run. And look, there was a couple of bikes there from Valleys missing. Um, yeah. With Sharpie out, yep. and, and look, Sharpie's Rogers. been absolutely uh, Steve Rogers. He might Steve be back. Rogers yeah. has been very good for him as well. Yeah. So they were down a little bit, but a couple of the blokes who um, have stepped up into that role, like Nathan Short, he yeah. actually, I thought he played really well. He got sent to the bin early uh, for a professional foul. Um, you could see he was disappointed in himself for letting his team down, and he got a bit of a razzle on the way off from some of his own Valley supporters. Yeah, he made a few uh, uh, CNR concrete and coach killers, didn't he, mate? But as you see quite often, particularly in the NRL, the side that um, gets reduced to 12 players doesn't actually always concede points. Yeah. They tend to, um, I suppose, opposition teams make the mistake of one down, they try to go around the outside mm -hmm. and allow them to slide instead of trying to keep working through the middle or through the edges. But look, it was a good game. At any point in that match, I thought Waddles were just going to uh, score a try and get there. But the scrambling defence, particularly on uh, Valley's left edge, I thought Hugh Sedger and Brett Seymour really put some big hits on and had a couple of the Waddles boys uh, concentrating on where they were going to be running to, to not get another big hit put on them. But look, neither side <coughs> stopped. Both sides played really well and it was a fantastic match. And Great matches like that bring out emotions in the crowd, so yeah, yeah. that's what it's all about. The supporters were on edge, they were uh, booing every decision the referee made yeah. against their team, but yeah. look, that's how it is. I thought, I actually thought Adam um, ref that quite well, and that was a t very, very tough match to, uh, to referee, and it was, it was fast. It was one end of the field or the other. Yeah, Nev, I've just got to say a few words to you as far as players concerned. Richard Murray, oh. how good was he? Jared Dodd, he was fantastic. Zach Miles under a lot of you put him under a lot of pressure, Mitch, right? And I think you purposely did that given Chan was off. Yeah, as I, as I said to you before, um, I was talking to Nev before the show, and bikes like Richard Murray and Zach Miles, I feel when you come up from the under 18s, you've got that expectation of not wanting to let your your teammates down, and right. quite often they play better than the regular A graders because they take their opportunity with, with two hands and really don't want to let the team down. So. Um, those two boys played outstanding, and it's a real testament to, to their junior development. Mate, I'll just touch on Brett Seymour there. I touched him the call over here. I think last year, Brett, I'll say this utmost respect, was a hindrance to his team. He had the reputation. Everyone sat him behind and relied on him. This year, I think he's enjoying life in Toowoomba, but we enjoy having him here. And he's a real asset to that side. Like, blokes have stood up, stepped up to the mark to him. And, mate, just his leadership on the weekend, he's played four games, was absolutely brilliant. He, um, I think last year too, there was a lot of expectation from his teammates that yeah. he would do yep. the thing. And <coughs> As I they do a couple of his NRL games. Boys, yeah. I've watched a couple of his games and he showed specs of brilliance, but not what he was. But this year, I think the club have um, found what he can do and yeah. what he can offer. But I think it's what he is doing through all the grades, through the yeah. 18s and the reserve grade. He's really got them... Uh, going together as a club, and I think they've found a real good leader there. Super for Rooster, I like that. And, uh, and I will say, Mitch, uh, equally the same words about Travis, Travis Burns. Yeah. You know, yep. hasn't he been uh, a breath of fresh air for your club? Yeah, Travis has been fantastic. He's um, done wonders with us out at Waddles. Uh, it, it, it's a real, it's a real privilege to have him there and, and have him controlling that left hand side. And there's been times throughout the year you can just see. Um, his experience and his game management, uh, particularly through his kicking game, to, to help get us seal some of those victories. Yeah, going back to Reed's, Reed's uh, comments, you know, like um, when he came on board, uh, I don't think there was, we felt that there was the expectation that Seymour got for Valleys because um, yeah. uh, Brett, had uh, uh, we had Matt Duggan beside as well, you know. And before we get on the summary, uh, I do want to talk about uh, the Matt Duggan uh, incident. Uh, on the on the weekend, and uh, by the time this goes to air, uh, the decision on that uh, uh, will be made, and uh, it's just uh, interesting. What's your, what's your thoughts on it, uh, uh, 
Reeds? Yeah, look, uh, Matty Duggan's what you call a clean skin in the game. He's not a bloke who fronts the issue. He's not dirty by any means. But in saying that too, um, you, you can only judge the offence on the offence. So regardless of who it is, yep. and I suppose if it's someone who has been a repeat offender, that's why they have the carryover point system. Yep. Mm. So you penalise them. Matty goes in with this with no um, carryover points. Um, it'll be his first time in there for, for as long as I can yep. remember. So, But you can only judge the tackle on exactly what happened, regardless of who it was. Yeah, and I think, uh, Reeds, you've been around a long time and experienced with that, and I have as well. And I think uh, the best advice I can give, and I spoke through the week, was uh, uh, they all don't have any malice. Every has as well. Yes, we know it's, uh, yep. it's, it's, it's Manny Duggan, and you can only concentrate on the actual... Uh, uh, on the on the role as well. But one thing for sure, I know he'll he'll get a fair yeah. a fair hearing. I've d I've However, it's probably the most important uh, judiciary hearing that we've seen for a number of years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and that it had to affect the judiciary members as well. Yeah, yeah, that that'll be weighing on their minds. I've done the judiciary a number of times for the TRL and this year as well, and it will weigh on your mind when it's um, going into a grand final or a, or a knockout preliminary final, particularly um, that if he was found guilty and he got two weeks. Um, you know, he if they, even if they win this weekend, he could miss the the grand final. But if um, if he if he's successful in getting it downgraded uh, with an early guilty plea, he'll be back for the weekend, is what I believe. But when it's uh, a mid round, you know, a mid season match uh, in the judiciary, we still judge it exactly on what we see. Um, we don't get to see the we see the footage maybe a day before, so we might have seen it yesterday. Yeah, only those panel members good, that yeah. are on there. So you get to have a look at it, you get to um, understand what it is, um, and it's good to know when you're on it that you don't take any calls from any clubs to so you're not talking on him, which is... Fair. And I've never had anyone chase me anyway. And then you just go in, you let them... Yeah, before I go on to you, Mitch, I want to ask you, uh, Nev, look, I like the system because we've got seven or eight panel members that they can call on as well, so it's going to be uh, there uh, to get the best cheering as, as possible. And, of course, by the time you see this, you'll probably uh, know the uh, result. Mate, look, I put a lot of thought into this over the week, and as Reid said, it's just got to be judged on its merits, what happened there, and they've got to come up with a fair decision, which I know they will, to show the integrity and respect of the guys that have been rubbed out during the year. So I know it's a grand final, I know he's a great player, he's top bloke, good clean skin, so on and so on, but he ta that, the tackle's you, you, the tackle. You got it he right there, you said the consistency for yep. those that have been felt this during the week, and I think if every TRL team sees consistency on every judgment, yep. um, whether they feel it's a little bit harsh, a little bit lenient, um, or right on the mark, if it's consistent all the way through, that's all Matty will be asking for, yeah. and he'll get a good yeah. result. And, and I suggest, uh, Mitch, in, in the club there, like, you have a, a, a lot of uh, very experienced players, you know, and they understand the system, so all you can really do is just support um, those involved. That's exactly right. What's um, the feel in the club? Well, oh, at the moment, it's it's completely out of our hands until tonight, obviously. Um, so we've just got to wait and see the decision of the judiciary. They've obviously talked about it and um, tried to come up with the best case possible for Matt. Um, but a bit of a disclaimer: I'm going to be extremely biased. That, that you know, <laughs> Matt's been playing the he's you know, innocent. He's, he's been playing the TRL for <laughs> 11 seasons now. I don't think he's ever been to the judiciary no. before. And um, you know, obviously it is Matt. He's a he's a, and he's a class player. But if you think about, you take any half back out, you take Jared Lee out of Highfields or Corey McGrady out of Valleys, yeah, it's going to be a massive blow. Um, so I just hope that doesn't waver too much on the decision of, of, of Matt's influence in the side. Okay, we'll, we'll talk more about uh, that when we get on to the A grade uh, preview. But let's have a look at this weekend's uh, 2018 Criterion Hotel Finals, and we see a second division. Uh, and we've spoken briefly about this prior to coming uh, back. Uh, Gatton versus Pittsworth. What's your thoughts here, Neville? I'll go Pittsworth. Yeah, Pittsworth. Yeah. Uh, Reeds? Yeah, I'm going to go Pittsworth. I was a little bit disappointed with Gatton uh, on the weekend against uh, Warwick. I thought they had great opportunities, but they didn't look enthusiastic to me, and Warwick looked like they out and thirsted them. So Pittsworth to score right on the hooter shows that they're in for the full time. So I'll yeah. go with Pittsworth. Uh, Shawnee? Yeah, I reckon uh, Gatton can bounce back, I reckon. You know, they'll. They'll show some fight. They don't want to go out two, two um, years in a row. Yeah. So he wants another gig on this show. That's what he's <laughs> <doing>. <laughs> uh, uh, well. I've got absolutely no idea, but I'll, I'll go with Pittsworth. Good stuff. Yeah. You know, you've all got no idea because my mate Brendan Simpson 
is a captain of the second division, he will not want to have two weeks, two years in a row that they finish minor premiers and go out the back door. So come on, Simo! I'm going to have a sly fiver with you there, Obi. <laughs> yes, we'll be sledging uh, on the back, on the top of your truck this week, I think. Uh, uh, next Riz. week. Yeah, next week. Next week. Yeah, so yeah. we're back on the on the veranda. Yep. Okay, and then let's look at this under 18. What a wonderful competition this is. Uh, minor premiers, Dolby, and we just uh, talked about Josh Chapel against uh, a, uh, a Southern Suburbs Tigers. For a lot of reason, they've got a, a, a very a, a much a, a fantastic uh, a fantastic uh, a book there for the players that play in under 18s. And also, keep in mind about South season. I mean, how yeah. good a medicine is it going to be for South uh, to make this uh, grand final after a win on, on Sunday? He reads. Yeah, look, this is going to be a pretty good game. Dolby looked like they were going to have the goods over Highfields last week, but the Highfields team. Just kept coming. Uh, Zach Croft was outstanding for him. I think the two second row, um, King, Wade King for the Highfields team was fantastic. Yes, he was. The two second rowers for Dolby, um, they both played really good football. Marty Fazell, is it? Yeah, Marty Foles and um, Hunter. Yes. Blake Hunter. Yep. They both played well. Um, Bradley Edwards come on, the real big fellow. Yeah. Number 24, he played mm. quite good for him. Um, they didn't look as enthusiastic. Josh Chappell directed them around. He did a really good job. South say they've got all their players back this week. Um, they're going to be very, very tough to beat. I reckon they'll roll the Dolby team this weekend. Neville. Mate, I reckon for every grade in every series final, there's one big upset, and I'm going to tip Dolby to upset these guys yep. on the weekend. All right. And, and Sean, for high fields, who do you want your under-18s to meet in the grand final? Oh, well, our boys have done a job on these fellas this year, so on both of these sides. So I think South will get up, and I think they'll fight through and get up. But it's funny, uh, Sean, because Highfield started the under-18 season a absolute on fire. They're undefeated. I think the first eight or nine rounds until Gatton, Gatton beat them. I thought I'd get that in, all right. <laughs> and uh, they have gone missing a few uh, a few games. But uh, look, that if it's a Highfields, uh, uh, the grand final is going to be a ripper, isn't it, Sean? Oh, 100 percent, mate. We'll be there, you know, supporting the boys either way. Mitch. Uh, South will get up in that game. They've got a fantastic calibre of players. Um, majority of them are in our first side at school, um, and, and, and they've got some wonderful um, strike weapons all across the park. They have um, had a number of their players playing Mustangs with us, um, and that's a couple of weeks when they did lose. So it was a real credit to South, you know, letting them boys play with us when we had a few injuries. So yeah. but we've got our, some of our players back, and they'll all be back with South this weekend. And who are you going for, mate? South. The coming from the guru himself, he knows all those players. You know why? Because they're all back in the south, he says, to be through the year. We'll be calling that on OB and Cookie Call through Para, para uh, FM uh, Special Events, myself and Kelvin Hawke's calling that one. And uh, so on to the reserve grade game, Highfields versus Pittsworth. This will also be on Para, events, para FM Special Events. And the winner out of this game goes on to pay, play Gatton. Uh, Gatton, and uh, what's your thoughts on this reserve grade game here, Neville? Seeing you probably looked at them uh, closer than I have Mate, the last couple of weeks. It was going to be a, a cracker of a game, and as I've said before, Pittsworth have won 5 8 in there. Tom O'Sullivan, he can be the game breaker for them, but I'm going to tip high fields. I've been tipping them all year. I, I just think they're, a, they're an A grade side in the making, if that makes sense, and Mate, they'll be hard to beat. I think they can learn from that mistake last week. Reed? Yeah, I think um, both these sides are going to go pretty good. Uh, as um, Hammer said before, you know, Highfields have got a few players in there like Jeff Nielsen and Leach and all them that are A-grade players and playing in reserve grade. Um, discipline could be their undoing if they don't um, uh, get that straight. But uh, Pittsworth, they've got some uh, good footballers in there as well. Um, I think I'll go with Highfields. I think while the club's on and up and their A-grade and their 18s are going well, these boys are going to be on the high. So I'll go with Highfields just over Pittsburgh. And before I come to you, Sean, yeah, it's, it's, uh, Mitch, it's very important, you know, like, uh, as you know, like, uh, your lower grades do lift the higher grades, don't they? Yeah, it's exactly right. Um, you, you're only as strong as your weakest link, so quite often uh, for a lot of our A-grade and reserve grade sides, they've been, they've been filtering up into different competitions, so it's really important to have good depth across the club there um, and as we spoke about with Valleys before that can be even pinching some of their under 18s players so they've got to be um, up to the task as well. Who are you tipping? Uh, I'm going to tip Highfields. I think they've got the potential there. Um, echo what you guys have talked about. It's all going to be about their discipline whether they can um, control their emotions and also um, control the ball. 
Now, Sean, one thing I've noticed with the Highfields over the last uh, two or three seasons is that they, uh, they train together, they drink together, they go to the dressing sheds together, they go to the toilet. I, I was going to say a few other things they do, but uh, look, uh, you're on the cresp of uh, what may even create history, and you've already tried up the club champion, uh, championships, and uh, what are you going to like most about uh, Highfields winning on the weekend, Sean, if I could say? <laughs> Oh, you know, the boys are pretty hurt after that game on the weekend and, you know, for them it felt like they were gone, but they fronted up this week and, you know, the ref didn't miss the tackles and the ref, you know, is the, uh, their boys' fault that they took it on themselves and that was all the talk in the shed, so, you know, they'll, they'll front up today and um, we'll be out there watching them and hopefully they can get up. OK, well, let's get on to the big one, uh, the Hutchies match of the day for preliminary final 2018, Waddles versus Highfields. And look, uh, this anticipation has been the same uh, for last week when we were looking at uh, those two games, and it doesn't stop here. This is going to be an absolute cracker of a game. I will say, uh, as far as Waddles are concerned, and I wrote this week, is that whilst uh, if they play without Matty Duggan or not, uh, the Waddles season has been uh, really moulded on the back of their, their, their pack. And the replacements, you would think, which would be Mark Gordon, Les Ross are coming into, in, into hooker, they're pretty experienced ca uh, campaigners. In fact, I think uh, both of them uh, played in uh, grand finals for Waddles a couple of years ago, didn't they, uh, Mitch? Yeah, both of those boys have played in the 2014 and 15 grand finals. So, um, as we've spoken about earlier, regardless of the decision of what haps, happens with Matt, we've got to have all 17 players there. Um, ready to turn up and, and play to the best of their ability. And I will say, uh, Mitch, before I put on uh, the boys here, is that uh, if Matt is, is not playing this weekend, uh, you've got something to prove, haven't you, that you can win without a thing like uh, Queensland did without, or Cowboys did without uh, uh, Thurston last year. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, as instrumental as Matt is, I think it would be a, 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 real, um, a real credit to the rest of the boys to, if they could come out, if we could come out on the weekend and win that game just to show the competition that we're not a one-man team, that we do actually have quite a good um, crop of players there. And, and where do you have to beat uh, uh, Highfields? Highfields are very strong across the park, so I think we, we touched on it in the Valleys game. Um, I think all the teams that have been in this final, skill-wise, are, are on a, a level playing field. It's just those big plays like kick chases, diving on the ball, um, making those tackles on the inside. So for us to beat Highfields, we need to have all those one percenters and, and our efforts all in check for that to be possible. Over to you, Sean. I wrote also that uh, whilst we've been talking about Jared Lee and uh, Sean Loxley the last couple of weeks, the unsung heroes, as far as I'm concerned, is your back three, which is uh, Dale Madden, uh, Sam Belfrig, and um, Connor Nolan, Nolan uh, 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 Sean. Yeah, mate, they're, um, you know, they're, they're probably underrated, those boys. Um, Sam's played at that higher level, and he just brings a lot of effort and a lot of punch to our forward pack. Um, we've, they've copped a lot of criticism. Um, that they're, you know, we're, not, we're too small, <coughs> and we let a couple of blokes do their own thing, and yeah, you know, those boys front up, so it's good. Yeah, and look, uh, I'll ask the same question, mate. Where, do you have to, where are you going to beat uh, Waddles if you do? Where oh, do you mate, have to beat them? Mitch has hit the nail on the head there. We just need to come out with a lot of energy and just do those one percenters right. Um, last time we played them, our know, discipline was poor. We didn't complete sets, and, you know, that's just been a big emphasis for us. So we need to keep rolling with that, and that's where we're going to beat them if we just do the little things right. And, Nev, yeah, you've tipped Highfields all year, and you've been pretty critical because I think because you... You've been frustrated. You, you've seen a lot of Highfields games, and uh, yes, they've, well, the last three or four campaigns, they've always had uh, uh, this the big man, small man uh, 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 question, haven't they? Mate, they have. Obi, and as we know, this year's a total different kettle of fish. And but they've only played two good games all year, and that's the last two weeks. So they've got to keep that momentum going, and you need that in the semi-finals. And I've no doubt they can, and I'll tip them till the end. But they just they've got to muscle up. They can't rely. Waddles will put 30 on them if they come. If they just little chink in their armour, they'll be gone. They've got to turn up ready to play. Just over to you, Mitch. Is Will O'Grady, will he make a return for you guys? Um, not too sure, to be honest with you, what, yeah. for this weekend. Once again, we'll probably have a, an 18-19 man squad, yeah. um, and then we'll, we'll finalise that, obviously, once we hear about what happens tonight. So. Uh, Paul, your thoughts? Yeah, look, this is going to be uh, one of the best games. This could even be better than the grand final, depending on how much these two sides bash each other up. But... 
Um, depending on whether Matty's there, you know, he's a class um, half of the whole competition. Um, he's going to be sorely missed if he is out. But I think if Sox Gordon goes in there, he'll be... Uh, he might be a little bit of an unknown. Because yeah, yeah. most teams uh, try to work on how to get up on Matty and that. And he's a tough man, Matty. He just keeps going on the line. But um, I think a little Sox might be a little bit different. It might be a little bit more early ball to your centres. Which um, I thought against Valleys, they didn't get the opportunity early enough in the match. So that might be pretty good. I think the forwards for um, Waddles will be really hurting. And they'll be out there to make a big mark and, and make it early and show everyone why they're the minor premiers and why they've been probably the benchmark of the year. Well, I think with yes, the Highfields team, um, look, Jared Lee on the weekend, he skipped them. He got belted a couple of times and he got up and belted a few blokes himself. He was fantastic, which allowed um, Sean Loxley, who's a you know very classy footballer, to get the ball when he wanted to. And with his turn of speed, he was able to pick up that Dale Madden on the left-hand side that many times. <laughs> they just kept going down there and making ground. But a fellow who probably didn't get a lot of uh, mention in that team was um, Shawnee was Tommy Hind. Yeah. Yeah. He, he started the game for you, um, which then allowed uh, Bainbridge to come. <coughs> I like Bainbridge coming off the bench. Yeah. Um, I, I like Nick Bainbridge as a hooker. I think he's a very classy player. Can give away a few penalties because he's pretty aggressive uh, in the game. But with him coming on when it's um, the, the first tens over. And that Tommy Hine, he did a really good job for Highfields on the weekend. Yeah, Sean, the, uh, Nick does uh, lift you when he does come on these last few weeks. Yeah, mate, he does. He comes in there and he really rips in because he knows he's got a shorter stint than playing in the halves. But, um, you know, he's very, cl he's very clever as well. You know, field position, he knows where his points where he needs to get to. And, you know, he's done that job in his heart in the halves there and we've got a new half so you know he's happy to do the job for the team. Yeah I agree with you uh, Reeds. Uh, uh, Mark Gordon Soxy is his nickname and it was against Highfields uh, out there at uh, Platts Oval and uh, you guys had him 10-6 or 10-0 and uh, you remember this Mitch um, uh, Mark Gordon and uh, he did score, score a crucial try Right, to get you guys across the line as far as I was concerned out of Platts Oval. And he's a very valuable player for you guys, isn't he? Yeah, um, Soxy's probably you know, in the same calibre as Nick. We bring him off the bench and he, he adds a lot of punch. Um, he's an extremely bright footballer. If there's a marker down, he'll know when to go. Um, defensively, a lot of people target him because of his size. Um, no, no, but he's... He, he's in, defense is probably a strong point of his game. Um, he actually and, brought a couple of their big fellas down from Valleys on his own by yeah. hitting them just around the legs really quick and hard, and they just had nowhere to go yeah. but down. And, and a lot of people don't know Soxie's resume, but he's pretty well a Queensland representative from the age of when he was 11 all the way yeah. through to 18. He's been down to the Bulldogs for SG Ball. What's doing with the moustache for him? Oh, it's terrible, that's, isn't that's, it? his trade, yeah. that's his trademark, yeah. mate. So we'll, um, he needs we'll, the headgear to we'll, cover it. It's yeah, terrible. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave that 15, for I don't know how he can grab it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now let me go around yeah. the table here now, Mitch. Uh, I know you're going to go for uh, 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 Waddles and tell me why. Uh, Waddles in an absolute pearler of a game. I believe it'll be um, just as good as it was on the weekend. Um, I just think the mindset we're in at the moment is that we've had too good of a season to fall one game short. So I, I believe every every 17 players that rock up on the paddock will, will give their all. And, um, yeah, hopefully the result can go our way. But I think it'll be an absolute cracking game. And same question to you, Sean. Uh, uh, Highfield's going to win and why? Uh, we've done the hard work, you know. We've really ripped in very hard in the off-season. And, um, you know, the boys, like you said, they bring together, they stay together, you know. So... To fall short, you know, it's, we know we know we don't achieve underachieved if we uh, fell short. Reed? Yeah, look, could be eleven all draw. I think it's a, it's the toughest no, game. No, no, I don't have eleven all. I've been uh, asked all week, you know, who's going to win out of these two teams, and every time you look around, you've got a reason to pick Waddles, you've got a reason to pick Highfields. Uh, Jackson Green at the back, sensational. You remember when you just played under 20s, the first 20s comp we had? Yeah. Uh, Greeny made himself the uh, full back and he's gone on from strength to strength. And the Highfields team, we've got a lot of our former under 20s in there as well, and uh, especially with Shawnee Hammer and that. So, look, I think this is a tough game. I'm a team that's still going and on the up at the moment is Highfields. I'll give it to them by a, a less than a goal. That was a better speech than um, uh, Peter Dutton yesterday. <laughs> and uh, I was going to say now, Neville. Highfields, three words, momentum, 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 and the story.
Yeah, I've gone for Waddles all year, and I'm not going to change my mind. Uh, their forward pack is amazing. Dylan Wilson was just extra special uh, on the weekend. Highfield's defence is a lot better, and it's going to be an absolute cracker uh, uh, of a game. And uh, we're really looking forward to it. But thank you very much, Mitch, for coming along uh, today. Thanks no very much, uh, Sean. And then uh, me and Reed's and uh, uh, never going to actually uh, sign off after the break. And let's hear from an interview for one of the better players for Valleys last weekend in Jared Dodd. This is the Trumbull Rugby League Footy Show. Thanks, Obi. Coming up after the break, it's Obi's Rant. This is the TRL Footy Show, brought to you by Gatton Leagues Club, Dolby Leagues Club, Toowoomba Valley's Football Club and Power FM, live and free from the Toowoomba Sports Club on Power TV Australia. Mate, Obi, I have the centre three court here for the Valley's Roosters, Jared Dodd. Jared, mate, how did that feel to be a part of that? Oh, yeah, it was pretty nerve-wracking at the end there. I thought <laughs> they were going to go over again, but we just held on and... Yeah, got there in the end. Mate, I'll see you on that other side in the first half. They're coming down the right-hand side there with um, Jackson Green. All the back, all the players are running back from him. Mate, you just snapped him in half and he dropped that ball. Yeah, I just sort of made a decision to go get him because I knew I didn't want him to get around me. He had got a bit of pace, so yeah, just made my best to go get him. Mate, tell me a little bit about Brett Seymour. Like, he's got you guys just just cruising along per like he's just all heart. Yeah, no, Brett's a good coach and I think he's got us going at the right time and yeah, I think we'll do well in the grand final. Mate, you played in many other grand finals? Oh, uh, a few with Valleys here, 15s and 16s, but not recently, not in the last few years, so it'd be good to get one. But Well, Jared, I thought you were one of Valleys' best tonight. Congratulations, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Back to you, Obi. Sunday night at the movies. Latest release movies brought to you exclusively by US filmmakers, including Lima Films. Join us every Sunday night at 7 p.m. right here on Power TV Australia. Hi, this is Mick Jagger on Classic Vinyl. This is Debbie Harrow from Blondie. This is Jimmy Barnes here. Stevie Nicks from Fleetwood Mac. This is Reverend Willie G from ZZ Top. The best tracks from the greatest albums of our generation. That's right. From your breakfast and coffee. <laughs> to your drive home. Got the classic hits that make your work day then you got a job to do. go by a lot faster hey, if we haven't said it lately thanks for listening the home of classic rock don't touch the dial powerfmradio.com.au Playing indoor netball, cricket, soccer, dodgeball and volleyball is a great way to keep fit and catch up with friends and the place to go and play any or all of these sports is Action Indoor Sports. There are competitions for juniors and adults of all levels of ability from beginners to the most experienced. Action Indoor Sports is home to Inflatable World, an inflatable theme park for all ages and new and coming soon indoor softball. Go and see for yourself. Action Indoor Sports is located at 31 Spencer Street, Toowoomba. Check out the website site to WombaIndoorSports.com or phone 46359999. Well welcome along to my music. I'm Jeff Black. Let me 
me tell you about the T-Bird Diner. Well, just over here, we've got a Ford Custom line that's crashed through the wall. Next episode on my music on Power TV Australia. I'll see you then. Thanks for joining us for the TRL Footy Show live from the Toowoomba Sports Club. And now it's Obi's Rant. Well, it's the first rant I've had for a number of weeks, actually, because we've been out and about. And first of all, it's a good rant. First of all, I want to thank uh, all the clubs we went to the last month. Uh, next week on the Toowoomba Rugby League Grand Final Show, we could be back here. We might be at Highfields. We might be at Clifton. Watch this space. But it's uh, been absolutely fantastic, uh, hasn't it, guys? Mate, it most certainly has been. As um, I mean, it's just... The way the people have looked after us, the clubs have looked after us, the coverage we've got, we've made friends everywhere, it's been awesome. Yeah, I've enjoyed it too, to some of the clubs we've got too, like down to the uh, Gatton Hawks and meeting all the juniors and having a bit of, a bit of fun with them down there, so it's been good. But look, for the volunteers, all the clubs are running on it, and people need to remember that, you know, when they're getting angry with um, sideline officials or angry with... Um, different uh, admin people, they're all volunteers and they're doing it so you can have a game of football so make sure you sort of thank them rather than yell at them. Yeah, look, uh, you took the words right out of my mouth uh, there, uh, Paul. First of all, I'd like to thank the volunteers and look, and a special uh, shout out to the Toowoomba Rugby League volunteers, uh, Janine uh, Maguire, Brian Gilroy, uh, uh, Jody, and all the people who have, who have helped and their family and friends that get behind the bar and Look, it was a difficult transition to, uh, to, to brothers, but one thing's uh, one is rugby league, and we really appreciate uh, the volunteers. And if you're there on uh, Sunday, please pat them on the back because they work many, many long hours. I can tell you they really do. Now, other topics I can say, uh, tomorrow night is Toowoomba Rugby League's uh, Night of Nights. So, well, when this goes to air or is downloaded, it will be actually the day of the presentation night and stepping up for MC uh, is none other than our own Paul Reedy and what a, a, a great night it is, uh, Reeds. Yeah, look, it is a great night. It's a, a great night to celebrate um, all the people who have succeeded on the field, but also um, I particularly like it where we get to thank and listen to the princesses that, that represent the clubs. They raise their much-needed funds, but they do much more by bringing the club together for different social events. So they're some of the fabric <coughs> that, um, that keeps them all together. So what a great opportunity, but, you know, there'll be player of the match tomorrow night I think would be particularly close. There'll be a number of oh, players even the, even, the even the player of the year, mate. The player of the year. I mean, yeah, it'll be uh, particularly close. So, yeah, looking forward to um, being there to be able to help out. Uh, you got a tip for the, for the Webkey price medal, mate? Um, I think Corey McGrady, James Dempsey, um, they'll both be good. Uh, Jared Lee. So, yeah, one of those three, I think. Uh, and Neville, you're bringing uh, young Gian around and we're going to have... Uh, uh, interview a thon yep. uh, tomorrow, and uh, it's great to have Gian on board this year because uh, we've got all those princesses to interview, haven't we? Most definitely, she's bought a new frock off the internet to wear and everything. She's really excited about it, but it just it gives such a great coverage. Over you interview those young ladies. Remember back to the last year's um, presentation night, the young girl from Waddles. I think she won it. Like yeah, Georgie McDermott. Mate, mate, wasn't yep. she a good talker? She knew league better than most blokes. She did. Yeah, and it's just it's a wonderful night. It's just you're there with like-minded people. We're there with friends, and it, it's a, a real highlight of the league year, I think. And your tip for the Webkey Price medal? Mate, I'm going to go for. I'll go Dylan Hay. I'm going to go for Smokey. Yeah, look, I think Dylan's right, yeah, right up there. Uh, well for Oakey. Yeah, I think he's he's going well. For me, I look, I really do think Corey McGrady has been. Uh, consistent all year yeah. and he's been very very good you know when you get clubs uh, that have got good players right across the board uh, he's very good I think uh, uh, Mick Bloomfield will go very very close uh, as well and just on Georgie uh, McDermott we had our annual general meeting of the men of league our nation for the Toowoomba region last night and Georgie put a hand up for secretary and it's great to see those girls yeah. put uh, put uh, back into the game. And congratulations to Tony Coonan for going on another term for uh, chairman of the local uh, Men of League. And of course, the last one is the OBN Cookie Call Medal for the moment of the year. We announced that tomorrow. Cookie, myself and Greg McIntyre is going to go up and announce that. And uh, it's going to be, we've got a couple of uh, uh, beauties. Brendan Wilson's try against uh, Highfields early in the year. I go right back to the first round, uh, Neb, where um, uh, J uh, Jason Wardrop scored three tries for a front rower in the first round. That's pretty good. Who did you like, mate? Mate, is the All-Stars game in it? 
Could we uh, get that? Yes, sir. All yeah, I would say that last try they scored in the All Stars Indigenous game. I thought that was just brilliant. Yeah, and there was some uh, uh, also some fantastic individual efforts right through. Uh, I know you've been listening to us all year, uh, uh, Paul. Not necessarily at all the games. Uh, what uh, stands out for you as far as the games uh, this year is concerned in the regular season? Oh, in the regular season, look, there was a couple of real good games. I think that one where Dolby and Waddles played out at um, Waddles out there where yep, they yep. it ebbed and flowed a little bit and there were some um, some great tries and, and it was a pretty good call out there too, Ivy. Yeah, it was, mate. Well, I must admit, uh, the game out there, it was uh, Braden Wilson up against Alex Ambia uh, in that contest. Remember that, Neff? Yeah, yeah. And that got our uh, uh, play of the day was those two going. And there's a number of them. Well, I remember... Tyrell McCulloch, he was nominated for two fantastic individual tries uh, for Gunda Windy coming from about 50 metres out, uh, just, just to name a few, Nev. Most definitely. And poor old Gundy, they've been the unluckiest side in the competition all year. Like, they're just, just a couple of wins off being a, a, a top five side. And yeah. mate, they've certainly got some good players. If they keep working at it, they're going to come good next year. And of course, tom uh, t tomorrow is the uh, announcement of a number of awards. But look, one of the big awards for me. Uh, really is the club championships, you know, like clubs are clubs as a whole and Highfields have won their very first and uh, I think it's a credit uh, to the club. We'll have all the top try scorers, the top uh, uh, point scorers, uh, point scorers uh, uh, a lot of other, I think there's, there's a couple of memorial ones there. And don't forget that the Rob, Rob Witt Real Estate Team of yeah, the Year people is love announced that. and uh, we had some talk, we actually... Um, uh, announced, we didn't announce it, but we made our team up and we're going to compare notes uh, uh, after on the weekend, aren't we, uh, Paul? Yeah, so it's going to be a really good, um, a great night. It always is. Um, it's a, it's it's a, a sellout too, mate. There's yeah. no, more ticket, no more tickets available. Great venue to have it at um, Rumours. It's always um, a good evening, so people will look forward to it and it's good to see them all get dressed up yeah, in their finery. That's awesome. All right, well, thanks very much for uh, Paul coming along and, and Nev. Next week, as I said, we'll either be here uh, Highfields Tavern or, or Clifton. We'll see how we go. This has been uh, the Toowoomba Rugby League footy show for, pre pre for preliminary final uh, day. We've only got one more show to go, grand final. Wherever we are, come around and see us. Uh, and thanks very much for our big sponsors, Toowoomba Sports Club. This is Toowoomba Rugby <coughs> League footy show. This has been the TRL Footy Show. Thanks to Gatton Leagues Club, Dolby Leagues Club, Toowoomba Valley's Football Club, Power FM, Royce Music and Computer Troubleshooters Toowoomba West. If you're in business and interested in advertising with Power FM and Power TV Australia, you can contact us by phone or by email. The contact details are on the screen. This has been a Power TV Australia production in conjunction with Power FM. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and remember to download the Power TV Australia app from the Google Play Store. Thanks for your company for another edition of the TRL Footy Show. I'm Robbo. We'll catch you next week for the Grand Final Edition.